So I uh, just want to show you guys how I uh, made that whoosh bang hit uh, that I posted yesterday. Uh, I used a balloon sample and uh, this is the source material, let's just listen. So yeah, that's it. And then I uh, took this sample and I uh, pitched it. Let's see here. Pitch it pretty much. And then uh, turn off the effect. Listen. I also added some reverb to uh, to the sounds. I will come into that later. Um, and if you open up the automation panel here, uh, I added a lot of effects and these are the automations I did for them. Uh, when I turn on the effects, this sounds like shit. Um, but the whole point with this is to show that like, uh, remember the story of the ugly duckling that became a sexy swan in the end. So, yeah, as you can hear, pretty mayhem. <laughs> and what I used is an harmonizer from Eventide, which kind of makes it spacey in a way. It doubles the sound and pans it a little bit. Then I use a resonator, and yeah, it resonates the sounds. As you can see here, this is the automation for it. The dry-wet control. Let's listen to it. And that was the pan automation, a uh, stutter effect, tre tremolo effect, you can call it. And that's the automation for it, dry wet control. And it's set on 16 steps. So, kind of makes it a little bit cool. This is the OTT compressor. Uh, what uh, a lot of people don't know is that, uh, you know, the XFER uh, OTT compressor that you can get download for free. It's based on Ableton stock uh, multiband compressor and one of its presets it's called OTT. And Steve Duda liked it so much so he decided to make a plugin out of it. Which is kind of cool. So uh, shows how powerful Ableton is for sound design and shit like that. Really, really cool. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, let's see, we have a frequency shifter, and it does what it does, it shifts the frequency up and down. As you can see, I've done some automation there, and it's pretty random how I did it. And that's the LFO control for it. Without. And with. So. Cool little effect there, kind of adds to the whole whole picture. This one is pretty cool, it's from Sound Toys and it's kind of a compressor and a distortion unit combined into one little powerful plugin. And yeah, you can listen to it, it sounds pretty pretty cool, especially on drums by the way. Uh, 
and I have some minor EQ done here. Uh, just moved some frequencies around 1200, 1500 hertz and removed some low end. Nothing special, just to make room for other things later on. And uh, yeah. And at the end here, I have uh, put a delay unit and uh, I have set it to milliseconds, a little bit differently left and right. And I have also automated the feedback and dry wet position. And uh, when everything is playing, it should uh, sound something like this. So as you can hear, pretty drastic uh, change when I uh, turn off and on the effect rack I made for the, this particular sound. Here I printed out the sound, so what, is, what you see now is just yeah the sound in audio file. I did this because I want to cut out some parts. Ah, oh, it sounds nasty. But we can find some cool... Uh, Cool, cool little stuff there we can use, hopefully. Or, I did, actually. And uh, here we are. Let's go through some of the cut sounds here. Okay. So, this is um, the top layer. And I'll use some effects on this one as well, as and some reverb. Uh, let's turn off the effects. Oh, I have to solo this track and listen to it. As you can hear, I have pitched this sample quite a bit, this time up. And uh, I then added some uh, delay and a compressor, which I sidechained to the boom. So it ducks in volume every time the boom hits. I also have some slight uh, pan automation back and forth. And I also use the auto pan to make a stutter effect for this. And this goes through a uh, mangler, uh, the eventide mangler verb and a uh, Valhalla. So shitloads of reverb in my, in my sound here. Uh, yeah, and there you have it. As you can see, I also uh, automated the amount of uh, stuttery effects on this. Next sound. Yeah, and this is which part of the sound I actually used. So you can see the highlighted area here. This whole clip is the entire one. Next sound. Let's see uh, where... Yeah, at the end here. <coughs> we took some sound and we uh, also did some volume automation and pan automation so it goes from uh, left to right just to create some movement and more interesting yeah you know what I mean there we have the volume there we have the pan very simple wow and of course some reverb on that but we come to that later uh, next sound let's see uh, where we got this from yeah Slightly before, I like to use the end parts, as you can see, and I also pitch this sample quite a lot. I have to uh, solo this. Boom. And as you can see, it's pitched. The original is. But we want more grittiness, so let's pitch it down. Kind of reminds me of a metal scraping heavy thing on the floor. Kind of thing. Kind of cool. I also removed some frequencies. And I threw on a black hole reverb, of course. Because I can. That's why. And uh, the next sound is uh, quite similar. Removed some stuff. And I also did some... Uh, 
stutter effect on this, which I automated the amount of it. So it gets more intense at the end. Nothing special. That's a, that's actually the, uh, the same sample, only I have uh, pitched this. Pretty simple, actually. Yeah, it's a very subtle effect there. But it actually helps quite a lot, in my opinion. I, I can hear it. <laughs> uh, this sample is actually not from the balloon sample, so I have lied a little bit. This one is me uh, shaking a box, a plastic box full of screws and nails and stuff like that. Can you hear it? Yep. And uh, yeah, that's it. Actually. Now we have this tail here, yeah. Let's I have cut out some frequencies again, removed some mid frequencies. I added some delay at the end of this sound uh, and I have automated the on and off button button. As you can see there. Because I didn't want it on the entire signal. Very cool. Yeah, I like that. And every uh, uh, all these sounds are then routed to uh, this group channel where I have uh, the OTT. And then it goes through a compressor that is sidechain again to the boom kick. And we have added the L, um, ultiverb. That's Palma's preset. Kind of warehousey thing with a long, long tail. And without. Oh, sorry about that. I have to. Now it will work. Sorry. Without. And with. So, to my ears, that's a huge difference. Huge difference. And uh, then this goes into our, uh, let's call it master chain. Here we have the Eventide Omnipressor, which is a compressor that kind of colors the sound in a cool way. Uh, what I have done here is, uh, as you see, very little uh, gain reduction. So I'm not doing much, but uh, the way I set this is I have a very slow attack. This because I want the transients to come through before the compressor uh, starts to work. And I also uh, uh, have a decent tail on this. Because uh, it's <laughs> I, I didn't want the compressor to release the sound right away because I don't know. I like it when the sound is squashed sometimes. Uh, many people don't, but... I like it, so I found a setting around 80 milliseconds. It's doing great for me, but yeah. This is really cool. Uh, this is emulations of real hardware. So the top here is the SSL compressor. The second one is uh, the Focusrite Red compressor. Really cool compressor. And at the bottom here, we have the Pug Child, which is also cool, but I have every ratio set to one uh, because I don't want them to compress at all. I just want the coloration of uh, these particular uh, compressors. Uh, analog compressor emulators. Emulations. Yeah. Um, it adds so much to the sound in my opinion. I, I, I freaking love them. I freaking love them. So, uh, next unit we have is um, the Neutron. I haven't done much here, but uh, we have the Equalizer. And uh, the Equalizer is basically just doing uh, some uh, dynamic processing.
Just to tighten it up. And at the end here we have my favorite limiter, PSP Xenon. It's not doing much now because uh, the, uh, when I made this it was in an entire different project and I just imported all the audio files and what, what not. So. And here you can see this is the finished audio file and here I have added some EQ and removed some frequencies where uh, it caused some muddiness and stuff. And I rolled up the TOF uh, around 17 hertz, 17,000 hertz. Yeah, and that's the Valhalla. I also added some distortion to my Valhalla with distortion and overdrive pedals really cool from wave and uh, I did the same with uh, the black hole but I chose to not add distortion on that unit because well shit got crazy too crazy for this particular sound there you have it The whole point with this video was to show that, like, randomness is cool. Just don't think too much, just do it. And, uh, yeah, take care.